Howdy once again everyone, something I talk about too much on this channel is how much I love wide angle lenses with bright maximum apertures, well here's a new little lens for APS-C mirrorless cameras with an ultra wide angle field of view, the full frame equivalent of 15mm and a very nice maximum aperture of f2. Here is the TT Artisan 10mm f2, a fully manual lens for Sony E-mount, Fuji X, Nikon Z, Canon RF and Micro Four Thirds. The lens's price will be in the description below, let me know in the comments if I forget. I'd like to thank TT Artisan very much for sending me one for evaluation, although as usual this is a totally independent review, we will be checking out both its strengths and its weaknesses. That ultra wide angle field of view is very enjoyable to use and also pretty useful, particularly for landscape photography and architecture work, although this could also be a useful lens for casual astrophotography, the bright aperture lets in lots of light for shooting indoors or in darker situations, or even getting slightly out of focus backgrounds. As I mentioned, this thing is only for APS-C or crop sensor cameras, here's what you'll see if you shoot on full frame. Well, let's start by taking a look at the lens itself, it's small and very tough and solid to hold in your hand, at 350 grams or a bit under a pound it has just a little weight to it, it's a totally manual lens, manual aperture and manual focus, at such a wide angle manually focusing isn't too difficult, especially at f2. The manual focus ring turns smoothly and precisely and it's not hard to focus the lens, especially if you use manual focus aids on your camera. As you can see here, the lens displays a very small amount of focus breathing, video makers will never be doing these kinds of focus pulls anyway though. Behind the focus ring comes a metallic aperture ring with gentle clicks, it's a little thin and a bit uncomfortable to use. The lens comes with a small attachable metal hood with a filter thread size of 72mm, my rather thick polarising filter caused physical vignetting in images taken with this lens, so you'll definitely want to use as thin a filter as possible here, still nice to be able to use them at all. The lens is not weather sealed and it only comes with a screw on lens cap, ugh. And well that's everything, it's a simple lens that works really well. Ok, let's see about image quality now, I'm testing it today on my Sony A5100 camera with its 24 megapixel APS-C sensor, inner camera corrections are not possible with this lens, at f2 sharpness and contrast are just good, we're seeing a touch of ghosting on vertical contrasting edges here, corner image quality is not so great, there's more softness here and some chromatic aberration, although the picture at least has not completely fallen apart stop down to f2.8 and those corners look considerably better, although the colour fringing is still quite visible. Back in the middle, the image is now razor sharp, although saying that, stopping down to f4 seems to bring even a further slight new edge of sharpness in the middle, corner image quality is looking better again but still not on the level of the middle, at f5.6 and f8 we see further tiny improvements, this is as good as the corners get and they look nice and sharp to me now stop down as far as f16 and softness really emerges due to diffraction, ok so not the sharpest lens in the world at its maximum aperture but still usable and stopped down it can get very sharp, although colour fringing is a continuing issue in the corners. Ok, let's take a look at distortion and vignetting now, we are treated to some moderate barrel distortion here, at f2 vignetting is heavy unsurprisingly, stop down to f2.8 or f4 for those corners to brighten a little but they never get as bright as in the middle. The lens's minimum focus distance is 25cm, not super close but I've seen worse than this before, at f2 close up image quality is fairly sharp but not fantastic, stop down to f2.8 and image quality becomes much sharper. Let's see how it performs against bright lights now, at the maximum aperture we're getting some unusual 8 point flaring around the light source itself, as well as numerous complex but at least fairly transparent flaring artefacts stop down to f2 and the worst of the flaring is gone, to be replaced by a rather massive sun star as you can see. Let's see about coma smearing now, it's definitely looking a little ugly at f2, bright points of light in image corners don't seem to have much definition here, at f2.8 there's a small improvement, likewise at f4 and f5.6 as well as some strong sun stars, they don't get any stronger than this even if you stop down more, still I love to see sun stars this strong. 
Let's take a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh. I wish it could get you just a little closer to your subject for a bit more background separation than this, but when you can get out of focus backgrounds, they look averagely smooth to me. No serious problems here, but nothing unbelievably smooth either. And related to bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. There's very little to be seen here, even at f2, which is a nice little surprise. Overall, well, the lens's quality is okay here. It's not bad, quite usable even at f2, but I have seen sharper than this before. Considering it's low budget, fans of ultra-wide optics with bright apertures will be satisfied, but not amazed here. All right, thanks for watching everyone, and a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for their generosity in keeping this channel going. I love putting out extra content and early access videos for them. Check it out in the description below, and ciao for now, everyone.